Hey, what's up? Today I'm going to show you how to create this balloon text effect. Uh, it doesn't use any dynamics and it's just using deformers in Cinema 4D. It's super simple, kind of a quick and dirty way to do it. Um, the cool thing is that once you've created the effect, you can change the text because it's completely parametric using the MoText object. We don't actually make that editable at any point, so you can go back and reuse the rig. This tutorial is based off of a tutorial by Sean Dub, where he shows how to do a very similar technique using cloth dynamics and pose morph tag. Big shout out to him. His tutorials are great. You should definitely check it out and I'll put a link below. Let's get started. All right, so we're just gonna start off by putting down a MoText object. And this is where we're going to create all of uh, the text. So for this, I'm just gonna say balloon and we can set that to middle so that it's centered. Uh, for the example, I used a uh, font rubric bold or rubric new extra bold because um, it's just got like nice rounded edges. So works pretty good for this. Um, we can go into wireframe mode so we can see, uh, let's change the intermediate points to subdivided and set the angle to 90 and the maximum length to something like 15. So that we just have well-distributed uh, edges along the sides. Maybe uh, bump up the depth a little bit and give that like one subdivision. Uh, let's go over the caps and first just create a single object so that this is all one object. And then uh, under the cap type, we can go to quadrangles and do a regular grid and set this to something like eight. Something like that should work fine. And we can adjust all this later. All right, so next we're going to uh, add the first displacer. So we're just gonna throw it on a displacer and just hold shift when you uh, select the object and hold shift to throw the displacer under there. Go into the shading tab and we're just gonna do a solid color, which is just white by default, so we'll leave that. Um, so yeah, basically if uh, we turn off the wireframe, you can kind of see this looks really bad right now, but basically it's just sort of inflating our object. And this works really well because it just sort of pushes out all the edges into this like balloon type uh, effect. So let's do something like 16 and it's okay if, if there's some weird intersection going on, we're gonna subdivide this later. All right. Um, Next in the displacer, we're going to go to the fall off tab and we're just going to create a linear fall off so that we can control the inflation. Uh, I'm going to do an X on the X negative axis and let's just maybe shrink this down a little bit to something like that. All right. And so right now it's just sort of inflating from this middle point of just like regular text, which that's fine if that's what you're going for. But for us, we're just going to duplicate the displacer just by dragging it. Uh, Actually, it should be below, uh, not inside. Let's just pick this one up. So we'll call this displacer inflate, and this one displacer deflate, just to stay organized. We'll actually just delete the linear falloff out of the deflation displacer. And in the falloff tab of the deflate, we're going to drag that same linear falloff. So right now, this is basically just doing nothing because uh, well, actually, first let's set the object. Let's go to the object tab on the deflate and let's set this to negative 16. So whatever the negative value of the first one was. So now we've got this fall off, but it's set to the same as the regular uh, displacer. So it's sort of just zeroing out. So if we just want to throw down an invert on top of that, you can see this, uh, basically it, it uses one linear fall off to deflate and inflate. So you can see if I move this to the middle, this displacer is deflating and this displacer is inflating. So that's good. Um, and you know, don't, don't really worry too much about this. Like I said, this is just sort of like a quick and dirty way to do the inflation. So this will be cleaned up when we subdivide, but it's, it's not gonna be perfect, but uh, it, it, I think it works pretty well, so. All right, so let's go ahead and just throw a keyframe, start over here on the left, go to frame zero, keyframe the X position, go over to something like 45, move it all the way over and keyframe the X position again. So now we've got this movement right here. And um, so that's cool, but let's actually do one more thing uh, before we go ahead and 
and make this look better. Um, I'm gonna add another displacer at the top and I'm just gonna call this displacer noise. Let's just turn off the other two for now. And in the shading tab, let's just add a noise. So it's giving it a little bit of uh, sort of just a displacement along the uh, topology. So let's do a noise of like 800s in the size. And um, we can animate the speed at a value of like one. And then go back to the object tab on the noise displacer and maybe put this like 15. So if you look, uh, if you look at it from like the front, you can kind of see what this is doing. It's just a little bit of extra movement. That might be too much. Let's just go back down to 10. So that's good. All right. And if we put these other two back on, you can kind of see what we've got. Uh, you can see what we've got here. It's doing that. All right. And that noise is just giving us a little bit more variation in the, in the surface. Okay, um, so next, and this looks, like I said, this looks really sketchy right now, but just don't worry about that too much. It'll look a lot better when we're, uh, when we're subdividing it. Okay, so the whole point of this is to be able to change the text. So we're not going to make this editable. Um, what we're actually going to do is throw the Motex into a connect object. And I'm just going to hold, with the Motex selected, just going to hold Alt and connect, and it'll throw it inside of that. And then we're just going to add a uh, jiggle deformer underneath in the connect as well. But if we take a look at that now, yeah, there we go. So it's giving a nice like jiggle. I think in the previous example, I think I messed with the stiffness and the structural just a little bit. So maybe just kind of bring down the structural and bring up the, the stiffness a little bit. You can tweak these settings however you want, um, but that seems to work pretty well for us. All right, and then finally, we're going to um, throw the connect uh, into a subdivision surface. So you're gonna just selecting the connect, hold Alt and click subdivision surface. And if I turn off the wireframe, wire shaded, you can have a look at this. I'm gonna turn down to, yeah, that's fine. And there you go. So like I said, it's not perfect. Uh, it's, you know, there's definitely some intersections, but if you're kind of just doing this for like a quick uh, effect that you just really, you need something quick that you may need to, may need the ability to go back and change the text later on. Uh, this works really well. I think obviously there's a little bit of intersection, but I think actually the wrinkles and kind of like that, that stuff kind of makes it look a little more balloon-like. Um, and if it's not looking how you want, like we could go back in here and we could change the uh, subdivisions around the edge, maybe. Maybe give it another, give it some more depth. You could go into the caps and this really makes a big difference if you just kind of tweak the, I actually think that's looking a lot better, tweak the size of the grid on the front. So what that's actually changing is the, uh, if I turn off these so we can see it. It's changing the size of this grid on the front. So that actually looks a lot better, just tweaking that a little bit. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, and like I said, the big reason I wanted to do this version of the tutorial is, is uh, A, it doesn't use any dynamics. So for people that are maybe not super comfortable with dynamics, this is an easy kind of fix uh, way to do it. Um, and then another big thing is you can go back into the Motex and you can actually just change this to whatever you want. So I wanted to say my name. There you go. And it's all uh, still parametric and works just the same. So you could change this to whatever you want and uh, the effect will stay exactly the same. You may, um, and actually you can also, you could even change the uh, font if you wanted to. Let's find a different font maybe uh, Poppins. This one's a little more square, so you may need to go in and um, adjust the the spacing on the edges. But you know, for for our sake, we'll just stick with uh, rubric because it's rounded and looks really nice by default. So, all right. So that's it for me. Uh, I hope you learned a little something. Like I said, it's a super easy technique. Um, you, I'm sure there's a million ways that you could actually like make it look better. And, kind of tweak the settings, but just wanted to give a super quick technique uh, explanation on how, how you can do that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, see you next time.